it's a glorious time to be a knife collector. But what's interesting is it's actually kind of overwhelming too, at least for me it is, with all these crazy different knife configurations out there. There is one that's been around since 1964, the Buck 110. And for good reason. It's just an amazing freaking knife. Sure, there's knives with better steel, better opening mechanisms, better locking mechanisms, but there's something that makes you feel good and very nostalgic and very American by carrying one of those. I hearken back to when I grew up and there was a big hardware store and they carried the usual case and buck knives. So those were your choices. There was no internet. So I didn't really know there was anything else out there. Then I worked at another hardware store and they carried K-Bar. So of course I got a couple of those knives. And then I went into another hardware store where I went to college and I found a Schrade LB7. And that was mistaken to be a buck knife by everybody because buck knives was a generic term, kind of like saying Kleenex. Let me borrow your buck knife. Okay, it's actually a charade, but... So while it's a fun time to be a knife collector, it can also be a frustrating, kind of overwhelming time. There are just too many options. Plus, you have the internet making just everything available to you. Whereas, when I was a kid and a young man, the only thing that was available to you was what was in your local hardware store. There were no knife shops. I didn't encounter one of those until I was in my mid-twenties. And then that was overwhelming. I walked in and had to walk out after a little while. There's just too much, too much stimulation. Couldn't take it all in. I actually walked out of there buying nothing. But the one thing that you always saw anywhere that sold knives were buck knives. And the two models that you always saw were the 110 and the 119. The 110 being the folder and the 119 being the fixed blade. That's probably been the most maligned knife in the history of cutlery. I mean, you look at any slasher movie or any TV show or movie that involves somebody getting stabbed with a knife with a blade approximately seven inches long it's always a buck 119. I always felt sorry for them. But that's just the way it goes. I mean, that's such a, a staple in knifedom. So the buck 110 is what we're going to talk about today. Hey, I may be alone in this, but a lot of times the knife that I pick to carry for the day is based on mood. You know, sure, am I going to be specifically doing certain tasks yes, then that dictates what knife I'm going to carry. Uh, I've decided I'm going to carry this particular knife all year long, and this is the Benchmade 940 that I did a video about that you can watch right there. This one's special, but you can make your own special one. I have my nostalgic days where I think, let's just go back to a slower, more easy, easy going time that wasn't so darn high tech and I'll wear a buck 110 sometimes I think way back to my very first buck knife which I bought in 1981 and it's a three dot ebony handles and I happen to get a good one see this is back before I even knew that there's going to be variances on tolerances of the blades you know, some are going to wiggle a little bit, some are not going to wiggle. I didn't really learn about that until I bought my first Buck 110 with the 420HC steel in it, oh, probably 15 years ago, and noticed, wow, this is kind of wiggly. So then I bought another one and said, oh, this is less wiggly. Then I got smart, and whatever store I went into, I'd say, how many of these do you have on hand? And may I try them all? And that is how I wound up getting two that have bank vault. I mean, honest to God, 
when it's in the open position, it's a fixed blade. It wasn't just luck. It's been going through a lot of knives trying to find that. Nothing against Buck. They're cranking those things out. I think it's one every 15 minutes or 10 minutes. Well, my very first Buck 110 is this Buck 3 dot. This one I've modified to the point where I put a nice edge on it and then I rounded all of the surfaces. Not quite to the extent of the newer buck knives, but I took a lot of those sharp edges off that were inherent of that era of knives. And I actually think they're much more comfortable to carry and use for a long period of time and it doesn't wear the sheath out quite as fast. The sheath that came with it is this. And these, I have to say, they don't suck, but they're not good. So that's why this sheath, wow, I like dropping stuff. Fuck me. That's why this sheath doesn't get used. Instead, I'm using a sheath from 10 years ago. They are more um, molded, I guess more rigid would be a way to explain it. There's more structure to it. So that's what I carry this one in. These are ebony scales. I'm not exactly sure when they stopped using ebony. I would like somebody to school me on that. Let me know in the comments when they stopped using ebony and started using diamond wood, which is what this one is with the finger grooves. And the only reason why I bought it was because I thought the scales matched up pretty good. And from what I've read, they actually hired somebody to try and match up wood scales coming off the line to mate them up with knives. And from what I can tell, a lot of times Buck really does a good job with that. Be surprised how much weight the finger grooves take off of the handle because that's a lot of wood and a lot of brass gone. But it does make the knife a little too small for my hand. But I keep the knife because I think the finger groove knife is so rare and so hard to find. You just don't see it. Plus, I love the scales. 440C blade back to the 1981 version. And that's, that's what the 3 dot is. It's 1981. The shape of the part of the blade that's in the handle here. I don't know exactly what you would call that. That mates up with the lock bar is different. When you initially start to open this knife there's there's a good deal of resistance and then it's free and easy. Now here's my ebony handled 2019 version? Yep. I put my name on everything. That initial resistance is not there. They changed that shape. It's more rounded. Instead of a long flat spot, they rounded further back inside there so it starts to open much easier. And you can one hand it even easier. See that? Beautifully matched ebony scales. Now this one has the 420 HC, but it is my favorite Buck 110. And then there's this Buck 110. Beautiful. I mean, I like that opening action better than the older ones. This one's a little more rounded, 
ebony, but this is a custom shop. S30V. Their S30V really holds an edge. Paul Boss came up with a heat treat recipe that is fantastic. So if you can get a hold of a S30V variation of the Buck 110, I highly recommend it. Okay, so I've said, you know, these are great. But what makes them such a nice knife? And I hear you. Just thought of it. When did they start using ebony again? That would be 2019. January 1st, 2019. And that is when I bought this one. And all your blade stamps will be the... Actually, is it's like a T with a little dot. You're not going to see it, but... 2019. And they teamed up with Taylor Guitars in this project to sustainably resource ebony wood. Diamond wood still requires wood. I don't know what's in it. You know, it could be any kind of wood but it's a laminate wood, wood you know s layers of wood it's not plywood it's all layers that going in the same way the same grain but then there's resin and all that stuff so those are toxic chemicals that have to be made and produced somehow through chemistry and then with heat and who knows what and pressure and all that kind of good stuff to form this synthetic yet real wood handle. Now these are nice handles and if you got a pair that matched up nicely I mean that handle is going to look like that handle forever and ever. Amen. Because they don't absorb water they're not really, they're, they're like a plastic but they're wood. Wood-ish. See, that's, that's the thing. So it took chemicals and all that good stuff to make this environmentally friendly handle. But now when we got tree huggers on every corner, they're going back to ebony wood. Not oak, not maple, nothing local. But African ebony wood, the same wood that you're going to find on some of your finest guitars. You know, all my fretboards are ebony. So, and, and even, you know, okay, this is what blows my mind. You got to help me out here. Guitar companies are under fire for using ebony wood. Now they're trying to find other woods to... That, that play the same, have the same feel, and almost the same look as ebony would for, for the fretboard. And that's when Buck Knives decides, now we're going to go back to ebony handles. What the hell? But it just seems like a strange time to, to start using ebony wood. I, I'm glad they did. And that's what leads me to, I mean, just these two knives sitting here. This knife handle is almost cold. This knife handle, the ebony one, is warm. There's something comforting about carrying a buck 110. And I don't mean as a weapon or anything like that. I'm not going to let anybody close enough to me that this is going to reach them. I like the warmth of brass and the warmth of real wood and the feel of leather. I'm the kind of guy that likes the smell of boots and the feel of leather. Wait a minute. I knew I'd screw that up. But anyway. There's something very satisfying about carrying a buck 110. What a classic combination. Knife comes out. 
open, use, easily resharpened. Close that bad boy back up, right back in, close it. Pivot down, blade back. And that is how they go in the sheath. No other way. So don't let anybody start putting your knife in your sheath for you. Not like you have a valet who does that, but I mean... Don't loan these out. I don't mean to be stingy. However, when I'm carrying a knife and somebody says, Can I borrow your knife? The answer is always no. Let me cut that for you. Is the next words out of my mouth. Thanks for watching. I know I sound like shit. Appreciate you bearing through it. Hope everybody's doing well. See you on the next one.